This is part 13 of the step-by-step -step series of a full restoration Singer Model 337. Uh, where I left off at the end of the last part, uh, cleaning the small parts, I showed you about cleaning the bottom plate, oil pan, drip pan, and uh, how loose this uh, felt or this fiber pad was and I just wanted to show you like I said when it dries it tightens right back up and flattens out it's as good as new uh, it, it doesn't smell there's a just a neutral order odor it's very clean ready to be reinstalled came out just r real nice uh, when I go to reassemble the machine now Usually what I've done is uh, I'll take each part bag and open it up and look at the parts and go, go through them and see if anything needs more cleaning or polishing. Then I, I break out my uh, safety glasses and my polisher uh, compounds, metal polish and my Dremel and just set up and go through all the parts but I, th I thought this time I'd do it a little different and I'll just start putting parts back on and anything that needs to be cleaned I'll I'll clean it at that time this was my bag of you didn't see me remove this this was the presser bar and the presser foot lifter mechanism so I want to I'm going to reassemble that now and uh, the first the first thing I have to do is screw this uh, lever back in place because once you put the presser bar in there you cannot remove this screw so when when I look at the lifter here it, it came out really clean doesn't have any tarnishing uh, a couple water spots here that'll polish off but that that came out very nice so no polishing there this is the little uh, screw that holds it in and it has a little uh, tarnishing on the threads and up at the top so and it's real light it's not really rust I just call it more tarnish so I would take on this the Dremel with the wire brush and uh, whoop, let me get my safety glasses on here hang on a second okay so uh, I would just just polish this up here So that's the the head of it's clean now, shiny. Uh, I'm gonna touch up the threads a little bit because I just see a, a light amount of tarnishing. That, that looks a lot better. All the tarnishing is gone, so I'm ready to install that now. See if I can turn this, because I, I have to be able to see what I'm doing. And let me grab one of my screwdrivers. Make sure it's a pretty good fit. Yeah, okay. Now, if you remember me taking the inner dental brush before with the crud cutter and doing all the little holes um, 
I do that now with oil. I still have a little bit of oil left in that cup. So I'm going to I dip this in oil and I'm just going to run that in there a little bit and get some oil in there. Cuz again, I've got the I've got the bare metal to bare metal and I want to be able to take this off in the future maybe for cleaning. So it just uh if I can get this in here. This is a lot easier when I'm not doing it for film, of course. <laughs> maybe if I whoop. maybe if I move myself a little bit here. Maybe in the rest of this video, I'll just say this is where you have to put the screw. Then I'll do it and come back and say, there, the screw is in place. <laughs> Don't let my fumble finger here in this weird position discourage you from doing this kind of work. There we go. So with the lever down, I'm going to tighten that screw up and it tightens all the way because it's it's got a little space that you can still flip the lever up and down. So get it in there good and snug. You don't want that coming loose on you because you'd have to take the presser bar out to tighten it up. So there's the screw in place. You can see it's going to move this little rocker arm here which pushes on the spring, pin spring in there later. So we got that. So let's take a look at the presser bar now. There's still some tarnishing on here. All the grease and everything is gone. But there's a, there is a little tarnishing on here. And I don't, I don't like the look of this where this has been ground off to hold the presser foot that's really dark and discolored so the first thing I'm going to try is polishing that up Okay, that looks much better. Now for this tarnishing, I, I could do the same thing with the whole bar. I can, I can do that with the whole bar. And I can also use some uh, polishing compound. I use these little cotton uh, makeup removers. In this case I would use the Brasso. I'll shake it up real good and put a dab of this. This stuff will, uh, this stuff is, is uh, fairly harsh so you're going to notice a smell. You can open a window or a fan if you want to. You can put on uh, the, the plastic gloves. I just get these disposable gloves at the 99 cent store. They're, you get a hundred gloves for a dollar, so about a penny a piece. They're one size that don't fit anybody well. And I'll hold that pad in case it leaks. I'm going to take that end I polished, and that's the holder. And first I'm going to kind of lightly coat the whole bar a little bit 
and uh, it works pretty quick. Then I'll take it like this and I'll start twisting it back and forth and rubbing it, pulling it, whatever. You can use these pads, you can use an old rag, a t-shirt, you know, an old piece of towel or washcloth. When it's been really bad, I've, I've used the scratchy part of that light duty sponge. But this is, uh, this is cleaning up pretty good here. And I like these to work really smooth and, and look good. You know, this uh, high grade steel and chrome, triple chrome stuff on these. They, they look good and I like to polish them up. They're going to work a lot smoother and they look a lot better. So that, that looks pretty good. You can see some of the stuff that came off there. Let's see if that's good enough. I'll clean that off. Make sure. Looks, looks a lot better. I can still see some friction marks here where that oil got into the clamps and varnished. So let me just touch up those two little spots. When I lay out all the parts and do them all at once, I usually have the radio or TV on in the background. Especially for some reason a baseball game. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of baseball, but if you just kind of listen once in a while, or you stop what you're doing when you hear somebody's excited voice, you, you can keep up with the game. But I think you get the drift of this, the idea. So, here we go. Take off my glove here. That piece looks pretty good. This is the push rod in there. It cleaned up good. It's going to go inside of that spring, which also cleaned up good. So that's looking pretty good. This bracket and lever is going to fit inside here. And uh, that's what's going to push the bar up and down. Now this is one thing that I failed to get that oil on right away. So you can see some, or maybe, uh, hopefully, you can see some little light orange uh, rust or tarnishing there. So I'm, I should have put some oil on this right away after I cleaned it. Okay, that cleaned it. That cleaned it up. That cleaned it up pretty nice. You back out that screw a little bit more. Oops, all the way. Check it, looks good. Put it back in there a couple of turns. Stopping everything and filming everything has kind of put me off of my rhythm with these a little bit. <laughs>
Oops. My wife watched some of my stuff before and after editing. She said I should make a bloopers, a, blo a bloopers video. I'll have to think about that. But, but I have to say, doing this video and the editing of it is not near as much fun as doing the machine itself. So if you watch this and you get some tips from me and you're doing your your own machine, then more more power to you. Oh, let me check one more thing. This is the pressure adjuster knob. See that chrome? Turned out real nice. The threads look good on it. I'll run over that a little bit. If you watched my uh, oiling right after the main wash, you uh, know that I brushed oil on all the metal parts. And I usually do the same thing with the little parts afterward, especially anything that's not real chrome. Yeah, it looks nice. So the way this is going to go is I've got to get this in here. through that side sticking out so that that's what will slide the bar up and down. I've got to drop the bar here. So I'll just drop it through the top and through there. And if I got this loose enough it will go through there. And eventually it will go all the way down to where it should be. I loosen this up a little bit. Come on, you. Yeah. There we go. There it's going now. Okay. So we'll just put it down here for now. And then the push rod. It's the same, uh, this, this is a little bit rounded end and this is a little bit rounded end, so it's the same. And there's a little cup here where it's going to go. There's a little cup in the top of the bar, so we can stick it in here like, whoop, stick it in here like this and get this up here and mate up to it. I'm going to tighten this a little bit. It's not going to be the final adjustment. I can show you how to do that later. But generally it sticks up about an eighth of an inch above this bracket. And that flattened ground off end should run parallel with the feed dogs. That's where you're going to put your presser foot thumb screw. So I just kind of eyeball it in there at first. And then later when I have the feed dogs and the needle plate and everything else installed, I can do the final height adjustment. And it, it talks about that in the manual and shows you how to do it and, and everything else. So let's get that in there. And that's, that's and let me just snug it up just a, a pinch, pinch more here. There. Good enough for now, and then this, this I would take some of that oil and just swab a little bit on there and get this back in there. And all these metal on metal parts, again, I want to put a little bit of oil on because they're metal to metal. So you see how that's going to work. That's going to adjust your, you know, your pressure foot bar. And you adjust it uh, to line with the feed dogs, which I'll do later, and you adjust the height. So I'll leave that fairly light pressure now. 